back with another episode of the Roman Empire. It was a good episode last time. And uh, did some thinking about that random territory we have up in Virginia, uh, Istros up here, which we inadvertently took. It was the Bowie capital. I've decided what I'm going to do is turn it into a local province. After all, I know it's a historical. It was kind of something I wanted to stay away from. But, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and do it. It generally allows me to be 81. Holy cow. Um, it allows me to uh, have a little more income. It also keeps that gold mine out of Bowie hands, which I think gives them a good jumping point because unlike the other special resource buildings, a gold mine, of course, is directly related to exponentially increasing your income. We don't want that for them. We also said what we were going to do is work on the facility and become a client state. So. The blessing of the Olympians upon you. What then do your noble people desire of us? How much does it take for you to be a client state? With these words, you bring joy to my heart Here and hope go. to my soul. Is my thanks. What about you, Egypt? Speak, what about and you? this humble servant of great Pharaoh will listen. If I can, I will agree to your proposals. Yeah, they won't do it. That's fine. Fine. Gods of the afterlife, spare my ass! Alright. Well, Massilia is now a client state, and, uh, yeah, we're going to move some legions away from the heavily fortified regions such as Sinkadun, even though it doesn't have much of a garrison. March it back over. These two armies, the uh, Temperapax or the Eighth Fidelis. Hmm. As far as that goes, I'm probably going to build up a fleet right here, just in case, because a Black Sea fleet will come in handy, especially if the Chimerians decide to do something, which they should any time now. Ah, Athens, I forgot all about you like me. Greetings, honored guest. I serve as my people's ears and tongue, listening and speaking as and will please. I can't make you a clan state because you're clan state of Macedonia. Okay. Well, we won't do that then. Occasionally you may hear a chattering squirrel outside of the window letting me know exactly what he thinks of the rain that's falling because there's a lot of rain happening. Uh, I did just wake up so I may slur my speech a little bit. I'm not totally awake. It's totally just because I just woke up. sleeping a lot, which has felt really, really good. I don't think we'll do that for a while. Lentia, Cordoba, Ebora, Bolteva, oh, Odessos. Tengus, Evalsen, good. Good, everybody's upgrading like crazy, and looks like we are making lots of money too, so they're food. Money too, but yeah. Uh, okay, Odessos. Be a trade city. Hurting ground. Yeah. 
hunger for battle. Wow, Thracian cavalry. Those are nice. Oh, and we get some of them too. Not to mention auxiliary foxmen. Good units over here, so we're gonna get rid of them. And a unit of them. Off up here. Ready for battle. Ah, uh, because it's winter. We'll have to wait a turn, but I'm gonna move them down here to work on making that legion a little more effective, I think. Also, this legion, this legion needs to march south. Get the fortification ready. Because I think I'm going to get attrition going through here, and I'd rather not. And before I forget again, then. We hunt. Make haste, men. Are you ready to serve Rome? There we go. My lord expects that you will find it prudent to add a small or... power, then that's because lightning hit and knocked out our power, just so we're all aware. 
things definitely flicker. That's <laughs> not very conducive. Anyway. Ready for battle. Okay, let's move these guys south. Set up the watch. Commander. Send that back. Probably send that back down here. I need to get Ready for orders. That's your command. Is there something I was gonna do over here? What was it? That. And I guess just get an onager in that one too. Ready for battle. All right. This is going Advance. back towards Rome. <clears throat> no, before I can get in there. from another family, I'm noticing we're not doing so hot. Because he won't be capable of marriage. Oh, nope, he will though. Marriage. Marriage. And marriage. Okay, that should drastically. Well, it says 41%, but I think that's going to even out next turn. Not sure why it says that, but I want triple digits on all my guys, so far that's what I got. Attack these people, and the favor of the gods in divine Pharaoh's good wishes will go with you. Thinking about it. No. 
Can you not attack these peasants? They offend the sensibilities of Pharaoh, the son of the morning. No, your speech is polite, but for Pharaoh, Lord of Upper and Lower oh, Egypt, courtesy is not enough. Like so what's going on with the map there? As far as I know, nothing's actually affecting the map except the water and the water. I don't think it's going to do that. It's weird. The gods showed them. No, come here, yeah. Not happening. This is going to be my invasion fleet, so it's going to have some honor in it. Giant Navy. Seven turns to build it. But the Invicta, well, well named by the way, will be responsible for our conquest beginning in the Levant region. Because we're going to take back what the uh, Soyukids have taken. Which is Salamis, Tiros, Palmyra, Jerusalem, Petra, and Hegra. Yeah. So, that'll be our attempt. Assuming that Alexandria doesn't strike back and the Egyptians push out with ridiculous force. They might. They might. Emilia, you look great. Stop messing with your hair. Anyway. Uh, I think 
that's it. That's all we're doing this turn. Probably won't get involved in that fight that's going on over in Gaul. Unless Massilia shows that it is getting trounced. If it looks like it's falling apart, I'll probably step in just to stop their collapse. But I don't really have any reason to go into Gaul at the moment. First time in about 20 years there's peace up there. At least as far as I'm concerned. States, so that was, but keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. Get <laughs> the circuses. sufficient to conquer the entire Middle East, at least the coastline. So, that's what we'll do. When do you attack these? No. I have no wish to go to war with Athens. <clears throat> as much as I probably shouldn't, I will probably send one of these armies to assist, along with, of course, this one. Going aboard. And since 
since I have them here, I will make a different army. Uh, plus two to cultural conversion. That sounds pretty good. And he's Cornelian. Vespasianus. Sergius Artorius Vespasianus. He's this Vespasian. And I like his name. He actually sounds very similar to a general that I recently had in Attila. Or at least ran into him until I didn't have him. Yep, we'll do loaded dice. Apparently for nine man's Morris. And. Unfortunately, Longinius hasn't seen much in the way of conquest, but he's doing alright over there. He's garrisoning the city just in case. Definitely can't say it's a bad thing. Looks like we may have rebellion ready to occur over here in Dacia amongst the uh, Bowie Empire, which, if that's true, we may get some guys show up, which, I don't know, we'll see what happens with that. Was it Dacians reemerged? That may not be a good thing. So, obviously this episode is a lot of campaign map, not a lot of battles. But that's what happens when uh, we make a blitz and we take over territory ahead of time and then we overextend our borders and have to go back and... These people are concerning. Will you not move your armies against them? When can you give the orders? Nope. Oh, lost that this is not though. pleasing to gods or men. That territory to the north. It's worrisome. I may have to step in now. <coughs> we'll see. Oh. Wow. End of an era. Lentilus has died. He was a good member of the Cornelian family. Julia, we'll do Petilius Varro. <laughs> Luckily, there's no Carthaginians left, so. Don't have to worry about him leading us into all sorts of problems at the Battle of Cannae, like the real Varro. Or at least what's ascribed to the real Varro. There's actually some debate whether he was actually charge that day, or Paulus was, the two consuls that represented the 80,000-man Roman Legion, the legionary army that went to fight Hannibal at that battle. According to the legend, uh, Paulus was uh, uh, very much against fighting the Carthaginians that day, but Varro uh, had command, so he used his executive authority to decide that they were going to fight anyway, and uh, Paulus couldn't do anything about it. Paulus ended up dying in the battle, uh, apparently taking a lot of javelins. Ready for orders. But, uh, yeah, the uh, forces of... Forces of uh, 
The forces of Carthage obviously crushed the Romans at that battle. Varro did survive according to the histories that were written. He ran all the way back to Rome. And the Romans were so uh, humiliated and frightened by the fact that the 80,000 man army had been destroyed. They didn't do their usual tactic of uh, blaming the commander for the defeat. Gamaria versus the Arweski. Oh crap. And they're bringing the Seleucids in. Well, Lantalus is dead, and here we are with the massive war again. This will be the entirety of the Eastern Empires against Rome and its allies. Wow. These people are concerning. Will you not move your armies against them? No, I won't. <laughs> not right now, anyway. When do you... Definitely won't do that. What were you thinking? Okay, so if we get attacked over here at Anthea by the Chimerians, we are going to be in some pickle because most of my forces have now been repositioned. Obviously, the Danubian frontier has been more peaceful at the moment, so... Yeah, I, I really think I need to keep these legions here, just in case. Kind of insurance against any kind of full-on attack, and honestly, the Gallic Confederation has a lot of armies up here that... The Massilians have a lot of depleted armies that aren't going to do real well. So, I'm probably going to have to... for uh, a defensive war, at least for the moment, while I build my forces up and prepare for my official invasion of the territory. I could, of course, move my legions by land all the way over to Asia Minor and just eviscerate Asia Minor in Asia. Wow. Asia Minor. But, um, yeah. got three more turns for that navy, and four more for this one, I believe. Five. Five more. That one's iffy, but I should be alright with those two. And then embark them, sail them down here. Um, wow, Canossos is still around. Partially because I want to take Rhodes. I want to take uh, Rhodes and Salamis as stopping off points first before my actual invasion begins. And I'll probably invade uh, one of the legions into either uh, Saida or take Ephesus to get a strong point, while the other legion will go. Uh, probably the third from Aganea. I'll take it farthest from Salamis. We'll truck down to Tiras and uh, Palmyra. Just split the union between the Chimerians and the Seleucids, which is what we want to do. Obviously, we don't want them to act in unity against us. Um, <clears throat> it looks like. Uh, yeah, Petrodaba, Olbia. So, the Aravisci have been actually forced out of this territory anyway, so they don't really have any, any vested interest in this war anymore, which means that the Chimerians, for whatever reason, are just trying to mop them up and probably are going to keep running at me. The fact that a lot of buildings have been recently destroyed in Nicomedia tells me that the Chimerians are having a financial crisis. Good for them. <laughs> I hope that hurts, so that may give me some breathing room before we deal with too much else. Uh -huh. There is still a possibility of having a rebellion in this territory, so Dacia may reassert itself. I don't want to remove these legions now, definitely not now. So we're just going to have to hold up there, defensive war time. Huh. Interesting. 
Where's my so Strabo? Nero Strabo. I'll just call him Nero. He is now the leader. He's in Numantia. He's a general in Numantia. I didn't think I had a general in Numantia. Oh yeah, the Spanish Legion. That's right. Longinius, Carbo, and Vespasian. Vespasianus or Vespasian. I have one admiral. He's at Araminum. So yeah, I definitely want him taking part in this fight. These legions don't have Commander. any real capacity to defend themselves very well. I think, considering the dilemma I'm in, I'm going to hold off from creating that last legion I can at my current level. Simply because I don't know where the threat's going to come from. Obvious, The obvious threat's the east, but I think... There's still the possibility that the Gallic Confederation, or even the Britons, I don't know what they're doing, may come down and attack me in Spain. I want, probably want that uh, another legion over there if that's the case. But yeah, despite their the Roman the Roman uh, policy of blaming the general because it was so terrible. The, uh, the Romans offered Varro a safe harbor and just pretty much told him, oh, it's not your fault, it's not your fault, fighting Hannibal, blah, blah, blah. Mostly because they had lost about a quarter of their Senate in the battle. <laughs> a lot of equestrians. These people are a danger. Your gen... fair. They did their best, I think. They definitely fought hard. But when 80,000 are surrounded and you can't even lift your arm to fight with, eventually your morale drops to such a degree that you don't really want to fight anymore, and you accept death. And for a lot of people in the center of that mash, it probably was just a matter of watching as your friends were cut down slowly in front of you and waiting for your turn to die. Which is not a battle, that's an execution. But in either case, the uh, Romans uh, sent the survivors to Sicily where they remained for the remainder of the war. Remained? I don't know, I'm tired. I just hunger for battle. <laughs> Apparently I'm making words up. But you know what I mean. I don't know why I did that. Somebody got promoted. Military Tribune. Yay. Ready for battle. Ready for orders. Okay, the second Antiqua. Ready for Venom. orders. I just realized that my two beginning legions are going to be the ones that I tend I send over there to fight. That's kind of funny. Huh. Oh well. <clears throat> Could be worse. Alright. <coughs> yeah, the coffee
just getting set up for for this turn or this episode, as you can tell. But now we have the direction to go, and it is of course east, which is where we wanted to go in the first place. So that's good. These people are a danger. Your generals are... You want me to go to war with them? I keep telling them no. <laughs> I mean, I might offer Asian assistance, I'm not sure, but that may drive them to fully declare war on me, so I'd probably better not for now. their only stack it looks like. <laughs> yeah, they're woefully unprepared for a war with Axum should they get it, so I'll probably just mop up Egypt if that's the case and take it over. Um, with the Blemets, I like their emblem. Oddly enough, I never really understood. I guess it's because they're kind of like the Kingdom of Maroi or whatever, one of the New Kingdom remnants before the Greeks came in or the Persians and they retreated south of the Sudan. Um, but their symbol here is more Egyptian than the Egyptian one. I mean, the Egyptians do have the Horus Falcon, I should know that. But uh, the scarab, winged scarab, is the symbol uh, for Blumenis, and that seems uh, highly Egyptian to me. And even their names sound traditionally Egyptian, Hamitic rather than Greek. So in a way, they represent the true legacy of Egypt. The same way that Ptolemaic Egypt represents the legacy of Alexander to some extent. Very odd. And I will say the representation of Horus that the Ptolemaic Egyptians use is definitely a Greek equivalency, not a traditional Egyptian looking. 
course. My avatar is, of course, the Horus statue at Edfu, one of many stands outside the temple itself, housing a famous cult location for the worship of Horus. And uh, Horus the Elder represents uh, the Pharaoh in his full capacity. Horus the Younger would be the prince, so to speak, or uh, the child Horus, which was raised by Isis. But both are representations of kingship and authority. One represents inheritance, the other one represents full authority. Had to do Gimelus and the other legions, or the other families. Yes. We'll do a smaller ship Set here. Support. And uh, fifth, we'll get. Yeah, that seems likely. So the Perinthia, that's an interesting name. Ooh, and interesting units. How about that? I like these Dacian bowmen. And it's a trireme, so one, two, three, Assembling four, the fleet. Five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we will wait so we can get quadrimes of legionaries. That's not bad, so the fifth Corinthia classes is Adanthea. That will help me out here in a little bit. Okay, that one's ready to go. That one's almost ready to go. We don't want to move out yet. Obviously, we're not completely Rome. capable of our invasion at the moment. Things are definitely happening towards that end. We'll do one more turn, and then we're gonna end it. territory. I don't think so. I, I don't know. Yes. Yes, they have, actually. They've lost it to, uh, Mario. Not you. They lost it to Athens. Outstanding, Herovaski. Either take it back, or I won't care. <laughs> Eventually I'll have to go to war with Athens anyway. Either that or rebel and I'll just take it over from whoever emerges. But in either case, none of my concern at the moment. They can't hold on to their own territory, they're unworthy. Uh, but I'm gonna leave it here, so... Not bad progress. Look forward to a big war 
next part, possibly even disembarking and fighting a battle or two. That'll be fun. So I'll see you then.